Today I'm going to discuss um, in some detail the lyres once played in the Temple of Jerusalem by my very own, very ancient Levite ancestors to accompany the singing of the Levitical choir. Now that's what I call roots music. These two types of lyre were the kinor and the neville. Um, <clears throat> the, besides the um, biblical text, the most important historical information we have about the biblical lyres are from the writings of Josephus Flavius and the Mishnah, that's an early rabbinical text. First of all, Josephus Flavius, he was a first century Jewish historian who actually witnessed the Levites play the lyres in the Temple of Jerusalem. Um, he tells us that the Kinor was a lyre with ten strings played with a plectrum, whereas the um, Neville was a slightly larger lyre of twelve strings played with the fingers. Uh, in my own playing of the biblical lyres, I like to simultaneously use um, finger plucked and plectrum plucked tones. I like to be a one man Levitical ensemble. <laughs> but the most significant thing about what Josephus tells us about the biblical lyres is the number of strings. Ten strings on the Kinor, I think that represents the Ten Commandments. Um, twelve strings on the Neville, the twelve tribes of Israel. And when you add the ten strings of the Kinor plus the twelve strings on the Neville, we get 22, the number of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. Incredible. I think this is the very first example of Kabbalah in history. Kabbalah is um, a mystical um, tradition in Hebrew whereby um, the Hebrew alphabet has spiritual significance because according to the ancient Jewish tradition, um, the, word, the, word, the whole universe is created by the word of God and if the word was spoken in Hebrew, therefore the Hebrew alphabet itself is the building blocks of the universe. Heavy stuff. Anyway, uh, not to digress too far, let's have a look at what the Mishnah tells us about the biblical liars. This tells us that in the Levitical ensemble in the Temple of Jerusalem, um, there were a minimum of nine kinors and more may be added, whereas significantly there were only two nevels. What does this tell us? Um, well, if you look at a modern string orchestra, proportionately there are much fewer bass string instruments than there are treble. There's a lot more violins than there are double basses and cellos, for example. So I think this is a significant evidence that the biblical um, Neville must have been a bass lyre. Um, either that or it was an exceptionally loud lyre compared to the softer tone of all these kinors in the Levitical ensemble. Um, what, what else do we know about specifically the um, the Neville. This can be gauged from um, the actual Hebrew root of the word Neville. Nev means carcass or skin bottle. This seems to imply it had a skin membrane similar to the ancient Greek lyra. And in fact, since this seems to be a base lyre, um, from what I mentioned earlier, it may the best closest analogy to it in antiquity may have been the ancient Greek barbatos. That was... Um, a base lyra, in other words, a lyre with a tortoiseshell resonator of which skin was stretched and, and then you had the strings running down that over a bridge. So the ancient Hebrew Neville may have been very similar to the ancient Greek Barbatos. Fascinating stuff. Um, so that's a bit about um, what we know from the rabbinical texts and from other lyres in antiquity. So how do we know what these lyres look like? Well, we've got some historical sources um, on um, ancient Jewish coins. Um, to see this, um, please get hold of this amazing book called Music in Ancient Israel Palestine, um, Archaeological Written and Comparative Sources by Jacobin Braun. And you can get this from um, Amazon. Um, anyway, looking at um, the ancient Jewish coins in question, the first um, coins um, date way back to about 124 to 125 BC. Um, and these are coins from, I uh, can't pronounce it, Aiko or Ako or Aka in ancient Israel. A double C C, A double C O basically, I can't pronounce it in my dodgy scout accent. Anyway, this um, seems to depict the elongated lyre, similar to the ancient Greek Kithara. And, well, and it seems to depict the reverse of the instrument um, because there's no bridge present. You can't see a bridge on the lyre um, over which the strings pass. I think this is simply a pragmatic 
thing. If you're going to um, create lots of coins and you're going to stamp complicated instrument, co complicated um, illustrations of instruments on them, the simpler the better. So if you turn the lyre round on the reverse, you don't have to depict the bridge. So when I turn my lyre around, it looks almost the same as the lyre on the coin. And the same with um, this, the Neville. This seems to, the illustration on the Echo coins, that seems to depict a circular resonator like a tortoise shell, uh, with two horns coming out of the top, and there's the strings going over a bridge, which you can't see, it's the reverse of the instrument, similar to the um, ancient Greek Barbatos or Lyra. When I turn the lyre around this way, although it doesn't have a resonator on, you can get the general idea. Um, it looks very similar to the picture in the coins. Moving forward in time 200 years to the Simon Bar Kochba revolt against the revolting Romans who occupied um, Judea at the time, the same two types of lyre pop up again. Here we have the elongated lyre, which um, with fewer strings, so it may well be the biblical kinor, which had ten strings. And here we have the larger um, lyre with more strings depicted, with a circular structure, which I think um, could well be similar to the ancient Greek Barbatos, the biblical Neville. Um, that's the biblical lyres, in fact. Um, full details, please see um, the historical research section of my website www.ancientlyre.com and that also lists the 10 albums of ancient lyre music I have out on iTunes, uh, Amazon MP3 store and CD Baby. Um, regarding specifically the Kinor, my first al two albums, King David's Lyre Echoes of Ancient Israel and Lyre of the Levites are dedicated to this one and uh, my album The Ancient Biblical Lyre features the biblical Neville. Anyway, check it out. Coming up, um, a performance on both these amazing replica lyres. Enjoy.
Thank you.